Tonight on Fios One News Now, Hurricane Dorian is creeping north and it's already affecting our area. Here's a live picture of the Jersey Shore. We'll show you how the storm is impacting our local shoreline. Plus, the mother of a missing three-year-old that sparked an Amber Alert this morning turns herself into police after allegedly firing four gunshots at the child's father. And a local patrol officer who was seriously injured in a hit-and-run accident in July is released from the hospital. Then it's another call for Verizon to save our news channel. Fios 1 News Now. Good evening, and welcome to Files 1 News Now. I'm Mike Gillian. I'm Courtney Kane. Thank you for joining us. We'll get to all the day's top stories in a moment. First, though, we are tracking Hurricane Dorian heading up the East Coast. Here's a live look at the surf line in Virginia Beach. The storm storing up some large waves along the Virginia coast. Meteorologist Joe Reyes over in the Files 1 News Weather Center tracking Dorian as it passes by the Jersey Shore. Hey, Joe. Okay, and uh, we are watching the storm very, very carefully. Now, there's a coastal flood and high surf advisory for all of the zones that you see here in green on Long Island, for the sound shore of Lower Westchester, and for this purple zone along the immediate Jersey Shore. That's in effect until 9 p.m. tomorrow night. It's for rip currents, rough seas, coastal flooding. The ocean is being churned up by the presence of Hurricane Dorian. It was over Cape Hatteras, North Carolina this morning. It is now racing away to the northeast at about 20 miles an hour. Look at all of the rain bands that are just missing New Jersey. This is moderate to heavy rain, folks, but it's not touching us. All we're seeing are the fringe effects, and the storm will race away uh, to the north and east by Saturday morning. It'll pretty well be gone for us. It'll still be churning up the waters, but for the most part, the storm will, next hit will be up in Nova Scotia. They don't see hurricanes and tropical storms very often up there, but they will uh, tomorrow night. In a nutshell, spotty evening rain, rough seas. I wouldn't swim if I were you over the next day or two out in the ocean. Sun will return on Saturday, fair, pleasant for Sunday, and if you got the day off on Monday, looks sunny and nice as well. All the details coming up a bit later here on Fios One News. Okay, thank you, Joe. Asbury Park on the Jersey Shore is now experiencing Hurricane Dorian firsthand. Strong winds, rain, and rough waves are blanketing the beach. Files with Jessica Orban joining us now live from the boardwalk in Asbury Park with how things are looking so close to the shore. Hey, Jess. Courtney, Mike, if you've ever been to Asbury Park, you know that seeing it this empty on a late summer day is pretty shocking. But that's only because this water right here is no place for surfers or swimmers. Because I think we did Atlantic City for Hurricane Hermione, and that was that was wild. This isn't as bad today, but I mean, it's still something. It's really unbelievable. I mean, I'm a surfer. I love this kind of weather, knowing that the waves are going to be great tomorrow. But right now, this is just insane. Between the wind, the sand blowing across the beach is totally incredible. Just a few brave people strolled down the empty beach Friday, only to be met with wild winds and sharp blasts of sand getting kicked up from the ground. A high surf advisory was issued Friday afternoon along the Jersey Shore, and it seemed like people listened to the warning. There are large waves. I don't know if they're probably 8, 10 feet maybe. Mike Fidek and Robbie Hecht came down to see how the shore was faring against the storm. Hecht is a lifeguard here, and Fidek is the assistant beach safety supervisor. Both men who have seen their share of storms say often these large breaking waves can cause some serious beach erosion, but Friday it was much better than expected. I'm surprised that it's not worse right now. Uh, you know, the, the erosion doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be. But maybe the next high tide could be worse. Although no one was in the water and very few people decided to walk past the red flags on the beach, Fidek had some advice for people looking to brave the wind and rain. Stay out of the water, because Friday's riptides are no joke. People come down, they, you know, they want to get their feet wet, they go try to go by the edge of the water, next thing you know they get knocked down by a wave and they can be swept down. It's very, very, very dangerous. The riptides are incredibly dangerous. As of now, beach erosion here in Asbury Park has been minimal, but officials here say that could change as the next high tide is expected around 2 o'clock Saturday morning. The plan for now is to reopen this beach to the public at 9 a.m. We're live here on the beach in Asbury Park. Jessica Orban, Fios 1 News. Jessica, thank you. And Hurricane Dorian turns deadly as it left a path of destruction in the Carolinas. Reporter Morgan Norwood is in Wilmington, North Carolina with the latest. 
Hurricane Dorian turning deadly. Officials confirmed four people died as the storm made landfall over Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano nearby in Nags Head. Hurricane Dorian now making landfall just 30 miles to our south. Winds here absolutely ripping. The storm's high winds sending water rushing down streets, swallowing cars, surrounding homes and businesses in Ocracoke Island. Rescue teams racing to the scene while officials plan to airlift survivors to safety. The danger right now is the rising storm surge of four to seven feet. On Emerald Isle, residents picking up the pieces after a reported twister splintered homes like this one. Miraculously, no one was hurt. It was a deafening noise. You could hear the wind, but other than that, it wasn't like a freight train, and then it was gone. Meanwhile, in Charleston, cleanup begins. Businesses that braved the storm ready to reopen. For the most part, we had we were very fortunate. In the Bahamas, new before and after satellite images show the scale of the damage as relief and aid arrives. Rescue teams transporting some of the injured from hard-hit Marsh Harbor to Nassau's Prince Margaret Hospital. I was buried in water like this, and my legs were trapped amongst all the wood. And all across the island, survivors facing utter devastation. Everything in Abaco is totally destroyed. It literally looked like we were bombed. More than 370,000 people without power across three states. Meanwhile, a flooding emergency in the Outer Banks with several major freeways and bridges closed. A long day ahead for residents there. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News in Wilmington, North Carolina. And be sure to stay with Files 1 News for continuing coverage of Hurricane Dorian. We're tracking the storm as it makes its way up the East Coast. A mother is in police custody after triggering an Amber Alert when she took off with her three-year-old daughter after allegedly firing four gunshots at the child's father. The little girl was found around 9.30 this morning and is safe in the care of family. Files 1's Naomi Yane is in Flanders with that story. The ordeal involving that missing three-year-old started Thursday night when police were called to a home on Pleasure Drive in Flanders with reports of a domestic dispute that ended with shots fired. Uh, we received a call, 911 call from a victim of a shooting. Uh, patrol officers responded immediately, uh, found the victim. The victim was alert and conscious, was able to tell police who had shot him multiple times. The man shot was 46-year-old Andrew Mitchell, the father of the three-year-old girl. The shooter, police say, was the mother of the child, Pachita Tennant. They then searched the area for the uh, perpetrator, unable to locate her. Police say Tennant then took off with the child in a silver Hyundai Santa Fe, prompting that Amber Alert. The three-year-old was found earlier today safe and unharmed and in Riverhead with a relative of Miss Tennant's who alerted the police. Child Protective Services is actually currently involved and will determine whether that child can stay with uh, the blood relative or they have to turn the child over to someone else. Residents in the area were surprised to hear that something like this happened in their neck of the woods. See it on the city, more likely, you know, up in New York, nearby. But around here, not really. Yeah. The condition of the father, Andrew Mitchell, is serious but stable, and Ms. Tennant turned herself in, and officials say charges against her will be announced later today. Reporting from Southampton, Naomi Yane, Fios One News. Well, Mount Vernon man who was arrested last year following the death of his young child is now pleading guilty to manslaughter. Lloyd Scott admitted to beating his two-year-old son to death before putting him to bed on April the 16th of last year when his wife, the boy's mother, was at work. When the mother arrived home, she found the child unresponsive. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Police say Scott fled the scene and was later arrested the next evening. The medical examiner's officers reported that the toddler died of blunt force trauma to his body and had several lacerations to his liver, pancreas and intestines. Scott is scheduled to be sentenced December the 6th and he is facing 21 years in prison and five years of supervised probation following his release. Still to come, a drunk driver charged in a New Year's Eve crash is sentenced today in court. How long he will spend in prison for severely injuring a police officer in that crash. Plus, a celebration for a highway patrol officer who was just released from the hospital after being injured in a hit and run crash that nearly cost him his life. Then it's a demand from parents as kids start the new school year. The message they want to send to Washington about common sense gun laws. That and more as 5 Swim News Now continues.